and daddy only the living shall praise you only the living shall praise you only the living shall praise you as i do this the let life come upon them in jesus name can i hear you shout amen seven times is done it is done holy ghost take over precious daddy i pray that you take over and bless your people my name be glorified whatever problem you brought here it is settled just as you sit down believe god and listen to me and you go home rejoicing shall we go seated now I want you to turn your Bible to Luke chapter 15 from verse 1. Luke chapter 15 from verse 1. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man received sinners and eateth with them. Parable unto them, saying, What man of you? Having a, and a hundred sheep, if you lose one of them, do not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness. And go after that which is lost until he find it. And when he had found it, he laid it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he called together his friends. And his neighbors saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. And so unto you. But likewise, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. In John chapter 16, John chapter 16 from verse 22. 16 was from verse 22. Are you now therefore have sorrow? But I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man take it from you. And in that day you shall ask me nothing. Very very like son to you. Whatever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. He tattoo, have you asked nothing in my name? Ask, and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. Third John, verse 3. Third John, reading verse 3. Verse 3. For I rejoice greatly. When the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. And look at Revelation chapter 21 from verse 1. Revelation 21 and from verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adored for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. 
for the former things are passed away and he, he that sat upon the throne said behold I make all things new and he said unto me right for these words are true and faithful and he said unto me it is done I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end I will give unto him that is a test of the fountain of the waters of life freely he that overcometh shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son and from this chapter some verses I'm bringing to you the theme jubilation for the needy part three jubilation for the needy we're looking at part three in our last revival hour message we saw the basic needs for mankind which is the salvation of our souls through Jesus Christ we saw it last Tuesday and we believe that with the insight in that message many have really sought for this basic need and receive it we believe that by this time many of us who were here then have given your life to Jesus remember if you look at Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 the Bible said but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things how many things all these things shall be added unto you and in Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 the Bible said but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus and also in the book of Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 now the Lord has said unto Abraham get out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing and I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curse thee and in thee shall all the families of earth be blessed so Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him and Lord went with him and Abraham was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran and Galatians chapter 3 reading from verse 13 Galatians chapter 3 from verse 13 Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law be made a cause for us for it is written cause is every man that hangeth on a tree that the blessings of Abraham might come unto the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith now looking at the places we read you can see that all the blessings of God is hinged upon Jesus Christ in fact they are tied upon the salvation of our soul through Jesus Christ even the blessing that was made unto Abraham we receive all of them through Jesus Christ and I want to let you know that once you are in Christ once you are born again through Jesus Christ that's the beginning of all the godly blessings in your life whether spiritual or physical or material or financial all the blessings are tied in Christ that's what the Bible said but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus even the blessings made unto Abraham we are connected to it through who? Jesus Christ therefore I want you to understand that if you are in this place you must make sure that there is a foundation for your blessings that you have been born again and you are now a child of God who have received Jesus into your heart as your Lord as your personal Savior and foundation of righteousness being laid through Jesus Christ if that happen I'm assuring you from day to day from year to year from month to month you will be receiving the blessings of God all the blessings 
through Jesus Christ. So, salvation is the basic need. If you don't have it, you have nothing. No matter what you have, there are nothing. So, today, we shall consider those vital needs that will cause joy and jubilation in heaven and in a believer's life when they are granted whether spiritual and otherwise through Jesus Christ and we shall go on to make our application of the message for our benefit and as we do that I'm assuring you today all that needs shall be your portion for we shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free for anywhere the soul of your foot shall tread upon the Lord say what? That have I given unto you. Any promises of God your eyes can cover. As we go through these messages today, today the Lord will give them to you. As we look into the word of God, he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. How many? From A to Z shall be added unto you. I'm assuring you, as we study today and pray, blessings shall be added to you from A to Z. So in this message, we shall consider the following subheadings. One, the important needs that makes for joy and jubilation in heaven and in a believer's life. Two, our applications and benefits. Let's see point number one. The important needs that make for joy and jubilation in heaven and in a believer's life. I want you to take note. Salvation experience makes for real joy and jubilation in a believer's life. Even in heaven, when one has gotten salvation, angels rejoice over one soul that repented. So, also, a sanctification when there is purity of heart, when your heart does not entertain evil, unholy, unholy thoughts, unrighteous thoughts, I want to let you know, it makes for joy. Purity, purity makes for joy. And Holy Ghost baptism. Holy Ghost baptism makes for joy in the heart of believers. And all the fruit of the Spirit all the gift of the spirit makes for what? Joy in the heart of believers. All the fruit, all the gift. Now, let's see. In First Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4. And from verse 3. Look at your Bible. First Thessalonians chapter 4. I read verse 3. Chapter 4. And verse 3 For this is the will of God Even your sanctification That you should abstain from fornication Now, that every one of you Should know how to possess this vessel In sanctification and honor Verse 7 for God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Holiness, purity, makes for joy. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Acts of Apostle, look at your Bible. Chapter 1 and verse 8. And I read Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. You see, when one is saved, uh, the next step as a growth in Christian life will be what? Sanctification. The next step will Holy Ghost baptism. And this step one, step three, all of them are spiritual and they make for joy 
are rejoicing in the heart of believers. It makes for jubilation. And also, the accompanying power and all the gift, all the fruit of the Spirit, all this meant for joy and jubilation. When one is sanctified and baptized the Holy Ghost, filled with the Holy Ghost, and the person is speaking in tongue and praying and preaching without struggle, my friend, that person will have what? Joy. Our people are trying to know what to pray. And why you are, you are self covered a lot of ground? Because you are speaking in unknown tongue. And which was the manufacturing of the Holy Ghost. And he takes you around. And he pray according to the will of the Father. And that gives joy. And when you want to speak or preach, you find boldness. You find utterances. You find power. He makes for what? Joy. Does it? I said he makes for what? Joy and jubilation in believers life so all this gift and fruit of the spirit made for joy if you look at first corinthians chapter 12 verse 1 first corinthians chapter 12 i read verse 1 and it reads now concerning spiritual gifts brother i would not have you ignorant which means he wants you to know spiritual gift and he wants you to have spiritual gift. Now look at verse 31. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31. But covet and nestly the best gift. And yes, show I unto you a more excellent way. Praise the Lord. Here we have been told that you should not be covetous of the things of this life. You will have to converse and nestly word the best gift. And then he talks about more excellent way. And that he talks about. If you move forward, you see it talk about expansion on love. Because through love, you will be able to get all these gifts are bound in you when you have fruit of love. It will be easy for you to get every gift of God and in order to serve God and be fulfilled. Because of love, that is talking about more excellent way. I'm not talking about that now. But what I want to let you know, the gift of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, they make for what? Jubilation and joy. Again, when a believer is filled with the Spirit of God, and have the assurance of making heaven at last, it will equally make for what? Joy and jubilation. Even in heaven, a believer is filled with the Spirit of God, and then that believer will have assurance that if the trumpet should sound now, if it will drop dead or she will drop dead, she's going to heaven. There will be joy in your heart and as well as joy in heaven because that soul will not be lost. It's going to be with God forever and ever. There will always be what? Joy. If you look at John chapter 16 verse 22, look at the Bible. We read it before. Let's read it again. John 16. Verse 22. Verse 22. And you now, therefore, have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man take it from you. I want to let you know our joy in heaven, nobody can take it away from us. If you look at 2 Timothy chapter 4, I read verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 4. And verse 7, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. If you look at that place, the statement of fulfillment, a statement of you know satisfaction he said i have fought a good fight i have i have kept the faith that's assurance and he said there is not laid up for me what crown of what righteousness i want to let you know this makes for joy assurance make for joy and jubilation in the heart of believers in ephesians chapter 5 I read verse 18, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. 
Verse 18. And be not drunk with wine, where it is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. So, I want to let you know that when you are full of the Spirit, filled with the Spirit, you will rejoice. When a believer prospers outside spiritual blessings, when a believer prospers and is in a good head, has his or her desires and prayers granted, I want to let you know that he or she will rejoice and jubilate. Is it true? Your prayers are answered. Your desires are granted. Will you rejoice? Answer me. So, when your prayer are answered, you are in a good head, you prosper spiritually or, you know, head-wise, or in the area of, you know, material things, my friend, it will make for what? Joy. Now, look at this place. In 3 John, verse 2. 3 John. Reading verse 2. And it, it reads, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be heard, even as thy soul prospereth. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. So it is very clear that if you prosper head wise, if your prayers are granted, if you prosper in the, you know, financially or otherwise, I want to let you know, as a child of God, it gives you joy, jubilation. That's why people rush to the public and say, I want to share my testimony because the Lord has answered my prayers. And sometimes they began to sing the song of joy, which they did not learn before, just because of the, you know, jubilation of what the Lord has done. If you look at the book of John chapter 16, verse 24, John 16, 24, he that to have you ask nothing in my name. Ask, and you shall receive that your joy may be full. When you ask and receive, honestly, your joy will be full. Second John verse 3. Second John. I read verse 3. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father. And the, from the Lord Jesus Christ the Son of the Father, in truth and love, I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth, as we have received a commandment from the Father. Looking at that place you read, you will see that here the writer said, I rejoice that I found my children walking in truth. Honestly, when these things are working well for us, it makes the father to be happy and he make even our pastor to be happy and he make for joy and jubilation in heaven so i want to let you know that when things are working well for you you will rejoice people around you will rejoice and they will joy also in the heart of your ministers and even the heart of father the father of all spirits because these your desires are granted and you're worshiping with joy take note when a believer's tears and sorrows are wiped away as a result of open doors, victory over the enemies, over delay in marriage, childbearing, unemployment, or lack of promotion, victory over failure in exams, or lack of admission into higher institution, and victory over unsuccessful business, and you begin to you know prosper and i want to let you know when this thing happen you will rejoice you will be let two of us that things begin to work well for you and you begin to gain victory over all that you are going through that you wanted to you know try you have tried many times to gain admission but nowhere but suddenly you gain admission my friend you'll be jubilating you so give testimonies Praise the Lord. And when a believer's pain or sicknesses or afflictions of this life are taken away, that means you have been tormented by pain, affliction, and diseases. And before you know it, it's taken away. God, God rolled them away. Honestly, such person will do what? He will enjoy. He will jubilate. 
It will make the person have real joy and jubilation. If you look at Psalm 126, verse 1, Psalm 126, I read from verse 1, Psalm 126, from verse 1. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. Then said that among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are up, we are glad. When your captivity is turned, when that problem is taken away, that reproach is taken away, when you are delivered, honestly, your heart, your mouth shall be filled with words, joy, and, and songs. If you look at Psalm 127 verse 1, 127, it says, Except the Lord build the house, the labor in vain that build it, Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wake it but in vain. I want to let you know, there is nothing you can do by your power. Whatever you see that is happening in your life today, and God has done it, you will rejoice and you will let. Because you couldn't have done it by your own power. Praise the Lord. If you look at Revelation 21 verse 1, what we read before, Revelation 21 verse 1, when the Lord has visited you, and change your situation. I want to let you know you will surely rejoice. Can I hear you say amen? amen. Revelation 21, verse 3. I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will do away with them. I passed away. Now, look at verse Sees. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will, I will give unto him as a test of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Now, I want to let you know when you are tears and sorrows and pains are taken away. Honestly, that shall be joy unspeakable. When you overcome, honestly, and be ready of making heaven to inherit all things, honestly, that shall be joy in your life. Do you agree with me? If you look at Psalm 40 verse 1, Psalm chapter 40, reading verse 1, Psalm 40 and verse 1, I waited me and had my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the mary clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. And he has put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. So, looking at the place we have read, you will see that this man, after so many years, uh, crying and weeping, and the Lord delivered him. The next thing that followed was joy and then songs in the mouth. And people would see it and began to praise the Lord. And if God has blessed you to the point that people are praising the Lord on your behalf, of course, you must have been jubilating and rejoicing. Praise the Lord. So when your situation changes, there will be joy, there shall be jubilation. And it will happen to you again in Jesus' name. I said, even this day and onward, there shall be joy and jubilation in your very life. I want you to take note. We should realize that all the above mentioned needs are very important in a believer's life. Be it sanctification, Holy Ghost baptism, fruit and gift of the Spirit, healing or deliverance, a child bearing, or Having married, that is, you've been single before and you got married, all these are blessings. Or God gives you promotion, all of them are blessings that make for joy and jubilation in a believer's life. Are you hearing me? And when they're granted, it will make for joy and jubilation. And we must go after them in this today's program and onward. Because when you have them, you will be a blessing to yourself and to your family and to everybody that comes around you. Of course, when you are blessed, 
it will provoke people around you to serve God. Many people like to come to your church and give their life to Jesus Christ because of what the Lord has done for you. And if you don't have them, even you are even your mother and your father, you can't convert them. They will not like to follow you. I don't know where I flew the point I'm making. That is, looking at you, you are going to church, no salvation, no sanctification, no Holy Ghost baptism, no power. When they are sick, you can't pray for them. When they are in trouble, you can't deliver them. And you say, let us go to church. They will not follow you. You have no husband, you have no wife, you have no children, and no employment, and no money. And you say, let us go to church. They say, church, you are begging us money, church. Church, every time you are disturbing us, you have nothing. But when God has given this thing to you, naturally, what will happen? Answer me. Early in the morning, you just wash your car, wash your car, your brand new car. And then you want to go to church alone. And you're not calling anybody, let us go to church. There are people that will say, when you are going, carry me. Great and true of us. Even your children will try to run into the motor. Oh, it's, it's like, are you feeling what I'm saying? Early in the morning, you wash your car and wash it very well. Your wife doesn't like to go to church. Or your husband, or your children, uh, all of them are there, and you just finish watching car. He said, I'm going to church, or all your children will be crying after you. Brendan, three of us. Even if your wife doesn't like to go, even if your husband doesn't like to go, and you are the one that is now moving the vehicle to church, my friend, your children will run into it. Sometimes, when God is blessing you, your wife will say, Let her, I want to follow you, let me just follow you. Maybe you want to enjoy the sweetness of the vehicle. From there, you come born again. But when you don't have anything, and um, you can't pray for their healing, can't pray for their deliverance, you don't have anything, you don't have any, anything, and you are going, they will say, go well, I'm not following you. Do you hear what I'm saying? You must pray, and the Lord will bless you. Because your blessing is not for you to live extravagant life. Your blessing is for you to serve God. And God will give it to you. So that you will provoke all the people around you to do what? To serve God. Because unbelievers will say, look at what the Lord has done for you. And they will say, the Lord has done great things for us. And they will like to worship you. God, he see you. At the end, I make declarations. You see, you, you shall be the head and not the tail. You see, you, from now on, you shall prosper. You see, you, you shall be in good health. You see, you, everything about you will be blessings. And I'm telling you, people around you will come to short because of you. Your wife will follow you. Your children will follow you. People around you, your mom, your dad, all the people around you, they will say, because of you, in fact, since your life changed, because of you, I will go to that church. Praise the Lord. He see you. As we are going to pray, I've outlined the blessings. If you pray for them, it is the will of God for you. He will give it to you in Jesus' name. So, as we go on to the next point, be ready to possess your possession so that you will be at home. We go to point number two, our application and benefit. Looking at Philippians chapter 4 verse 19, say, But my God shall supply all your needs according to the riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, it's about seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, how many things? All things means spiritually and physically and materially and financially. All these things shall be added unto you. Look at John chapter 14 and verse 16. And now we pray the Father. And he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, 
because he seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I want to let you know, it is the will of God that you are baptized with the Holy Ghost. That the Spirit of God dwell in you, and you in him. So, as we pray today, you are going home with the Holy Ghost. You are going home with the power of God. In Luke chapter 10, I read verse 19 to 22. Luke chapter 10. Look at your Bible. Chapter 10. From verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Oh, we're standing in this. Rejoice not. That the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. And in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid this thing from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto birds, even so, Father. For so it seemeth. to have you ask nothing in my name as and you shall receive that your joy may be full he see you all you have put them together he said they are what nothing ask me and I will give you these things and your joy may be full so today remember what you have even right now, amount to nothing to all that God wants to give to you. Of course, the earth is of the Lord and the fullness thereof. He wants to give you all things. Therefore, what you ask today, my Father will give it to you. I am very sure you are not living here the same. You are going home with your expectation as I pray for you. Because every unbreakable you will surely break your life in Jesus' name. The Lord will give you how many things? How many things? And those things will make for joy in heaven. And in the believer's life, and all the people around you, they will serve God because of you. If you believe, you say amen. amen. And so as many of you that are laboring and serving God, my Father will wipe away your tears. How many of you believe me? I say your tears shall be what? Look at John chapter 4. I read verse 36. John's Gospel chapter 4. And verse 36 He that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life and tanner, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice. He see you today, you will receive wages. My father will pay you. And I'm assuring you at the end, we shall be with the Father forever and ever in Jesus' name. In Luke chapter 15, verse 5. Luke chapter 15. 
and read from verse 5. And when he had found it, he laid it on his shoulder, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he called together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Honestly, there shall be joy in your family, there shall be joy in heaven. As all your requests are granted and salvation is given to you in Jesus' name. So today, we should pray that this vital needs shall be granted unto you. Just as he has given us salvation, pray for sanctification. Pray for Holy Ghost baptism. Pray for the gift of the Spirit and the power. Pray for the fruit of the Spirit. Pray to win souls. And to have the assurance of making heaven at the end of your life, assurance of salvation, pray for it, the Lord will do it for you. And also, we should pray that our tears shall be wiped away, our sorrows and pains be wiped away forever in Jesus' name. We should also pray to prosper, be in good health, and have our desires and prayers answered always. So that we can have our open doors, victory over our enemies, and get into our marriage, and have children, and be delivered from the demons, from the powers of darkness, and their oppressions, and get employment, promotion, and pass our exams. The Lord is ready for it. I say the Lord will do it for you. And also gain admission into high institutions, have success in every area. Have our visas, our citizenship, all that you are looking for, praying for, my father will do it for you. I want to let you know when we have all these things, that will constitute what? Joy and jubilation. And cause joy in heaven. Heaven to rejoice on your behalf. Imagine you winning souls. Will in heaven rejoice? And Sami. Imagine you living a holy life and helping other people to be holy. Will in heaven rejoice? And Sami, imagine that right now, all these blessings of God, you are filled with them. And you can now distribute them and then help others to get to the blessing. Will you heaven rejoice? My friend, this day you are going with these things. Jesus said to us, All things are delivered unto me of my Father. My friend, all these things shall be delivered to us today. And we shall go home causing joy and jubilation in the life of the people around us. And then at the end, we shall make heaven in Jesus' name. Remember and don't forget that the prayer that was made, that Jesus taught us, before we go through that prayer, I want to take you back to something, to Revelation 21. Let's go back to it. Revelation 21, before we get to that prayer. Revelation chapter 21 from verse 3 to 4 21 verse 3 to 4 and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God verse 4 and God shall wipe away all tears all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away I want you to imagine that no more pain no more sorrow, no more thirst, no more hunger, forever and ever. My friend, there is something you should understand. This thing that when you are in this kind of state, that no more pain, no more death, no more thirst, no more hunger, no more affliction, forever and ever. Will you be rejoicing? Please, somebody will answer me. Now, remember that these things are described as what is obtainable in heaven. 
where God's wipe away all tears and all sorrow and all pain and death. Now, let us see whether this kind of thing, somebody can experience such life on earth. Whether it is possible for a believer to experience such life. That's what we want to confirm now. Whether a believer will contest it when your tears are wiped away, your sorrows are wiped away, your dead have been taken away, and all these things are no more. Whether is it actually God's will? Does God desire that for you? Matthew chapter 6 verse 9. Please open your Bible. Let's see what happened there. Matthew chapter 6, I read verse 9. And it says, chapter 6 and verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, that we be done in earth as it is in. I oh, yeah, look up now. Your will be done on earth. Eh? Let your will be done on earth as it is. What is happening in heaven? No more pain. No more tears. No more sorrows. No more death. He said, pray that it should happen where? On earth as it is in heaven. He see you today. I will pray that as it is in heaven, it shall be your life. It shall be your family. It shall be your marriage. It shall be your head. As it is in heaven. Tears shall be wiped away. They shall be wiped away. Pain shall be wiped away. Sorrow shall be wiped away. And you shall be no more hunger and thirst forever. In Jesus' name. You see you. You are going home with jubilation. The kingdom of God will come upon you. And then you will go home rejoicing, singing the, singing the song of Hosanna, hallelujah, praise the Lord. He see you, you are going to go home with a good heart today. Because the Lord will walk on you. And in fact, the work has been done. I'm only going to do declaration at the end. And then you just go home with blessings. Blessings, spiritually, physically, materially, financially. Honestly, we, I want to let you know. God is not a man. Whatever he says, he does it. He said, ask anything in my name, I will do it. And that is what we pray at the beginning. And I believe he has done it. Now, what do you need to go with what? Jubilation. So, all things shall be delivered into your hands. Do you agree with me? So, we are going home with joy and what? Jubilation. Jubilation song. We shall be jubilated. We shall rejuvenate. We shall jubilate. 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 Choosing, jubilate. Choosing, jubilate. Choosing, jubilate. Choosing. We shall jubilate. Just jubilate. We shall jubilate. We shall jubilate. We shall jubilate. Choosing jubilate. We shall jubilate. Jubilate chosen. Jubilate chosen. Jubilate chosen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Remember, we shall jubilate home. Can I hear you say amen? So, note. As this program and the enemy submitted is fast approaching, we all should, without wasting time, go into evangelism with. So, one thing that is very certain is that as we go into this evangelism, take course group evangelism, we can come in group and go out. We can go from house to house evangelism market evangelism, bus to bus evangelism, also evangelism on the road, everyone, whoever you shall come across, you give the person a hand beat and invite the person to come to the oncoming program. We should engage you to preaching and doing morning cry. 
everywhere. With what? You have it. Without go into morning cry, afternoon cry, evening cry, fasting and prayers. This is the time before this program proper. We should buy apron. If buy apron for yourself and wear it, you can buy it for others. You can even give those people who are begging you on the road, say, give me a pro, give me a pro. Buy and give them. Praise the Lord. We should buy banners too and place them on the strategic positions. We should send email messages to people outside and in the country. We should place adverts in the newspapers and other media, explore every aspect of media. We should sponsor this program by buying gas. Somebody should buy gas. I say, I'm going to buy a tanker or gas for the program for all our buses. Or fuel. Also, let us buy seat. Because the seat that is here cannot contain the people that are coming. Buy seat and bring seat to the church. Sponsor the program and God will surprise you. Are you hearing me? Let us also make pledges and redeem it. And you can't give above God. God will surprise you. We should place advert in TV, TikTok, WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook, on radio. Also send invitations to our relations. We should send text messages, email messages to people. We should distribute the handbills to everybody that shall come our way. We should buy, I've told you before, buy apron, wear apron, buy panels, place them in strategic position, as told you, as a matter of publicity. We must compare all to come and do all we can to ensure the success of this program and God will bless you. Can I hear you say amen? amen? Please invite everybody. Invite the blind, the deaf and dumb, the afflicted, the oppressed, the poor, the barren, the single, all those that have a terminal disease, all those that are crippled, that stroke, have stroke, mad people, invite prostitutes, invite sinners, Invite everybody, whatever you find them, invite all the people that are into, you know, all these people that are deceived into um, uh, practices of native doctor and this, or those that patronize, invite everybody to come. Those that have hunchback, those with embassies, those that have lead poison, those that are afflicted, heart and liver and kidney problem, bring up. And when they responded to your invitation, be ready for your wages. God will pay your wages. So compare and bring about to come. And also remember, bring them to come on Thursday, on every Thursday, Tuesdays, Sundays, bring them to come. But the program proper, make sure you will never come empty handed. If somebody uh, came here, ordinary program, 70 people, let's come with 5,000, 2,000, 1,000, or 20,000 on 29 and 30. Or come with somebody, and the Lord will surprise you in Jesus' name. Don't forget, put these things into practice, for not the hearers are justified, but the doers of this world. As we go to do them, the Lord will surprise you in Jesus' name. And make your Lord your personal Savior. For every blessings of heaven to follow you home in Jesus' name. Don't forget, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11 to 8, He said, Come unto me, O ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you your rest. So oh, it's only in Him you have all these blessings and jubilation. So, if you are not in him, no matter what you try, 
you can never be said to be righteous. It is the righteousness of God in us. He is the sure foundation. Therefore, you need to search your life. One thing that is very certain, the Bible said in Romans chapter 3 verse 23, he said, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And then in Romans chapter 6 and verse 1, Romans chapter 6, I read verse 1. The Bible has this to say, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Verse 2 said, God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer daring? Now listen to me. We cannot continue in sin and continue to expect that God's presence and help shall be upon us. Because God is not a sinner. His spirit does not lead people to sin. That's what the Bible said in Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 4, stanza B. The soul that sineth shall die. Any soul that commits sin, that continues in sin, shall be separated from God. Because God cannot abide in that soul. Because if you look at 1 John chapter 3 verse 8, sin does not come from God. God has no business with sin. 1 John chapter 3 verse 8 says, He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that they might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God, does not commit sin for he still remained in him and he cannot sin because he's born of God if you look at the place we read it is very clear that we can see the origin of sin sin comes from the devil devil is the author of sin devil is the one that brought sin into the world and anybody that go into sin consciously or unconsciously He's trying to say he doesn't belong to God. And that's why you must check your life. For the Bible says that he that committed sin is of the devil. Because the origin of sin is from the devil. And that's why Jesus came to destroy that nature. And then to give us the nature of God, the spirit of God. So that we will never continue in sin. So don't ever continue in sin and be happy. Don't ever continue in sin and say you are born again, you are a child of God, you are going to heaven. Don't ever continue in sin and continue to claim that, well, you, there is no problem, there is problem. For the soul that sin shall die. And he that committed sin is of the devil. Now, listen to me. If you are asking what is sin, First John chapter 5, verse 17. He said, all unrighteousness is sin. Unbelief is sin. Selfishness is sin and unforgiveness is sin and pride is sin, anger is sin, lying is sin, a hatred is sin, and the unforgiveness I've told you before is a terrible sin. Speaking evil of people, murmuring, envy, all these things are terrible sin. Blasphemy, false witnesses. These are terrible sins. Strife, contention, bitterness, keeping malice, bearing grudge, covetousness. All these things are terrible sins. Cursing people, swearing with heaven and earth, worshiping idol, making idol, having idol in your heart. These things are terrible sin. You need to search your life and repent and confess this evil and promise God no more. The presence of these things are the presence of the devil. Search your life 
are you going to the native doctors to make sharp repent court gather their property and burn them their books their rings their chains whatever they gave to you renounce them and promise God no more ask for mercy God will show you mercy I don't know the wickedness I'm into are you stealing are you picking pockets are you breaking home of people and back on it repent to that say no more are you a froster you do black people white people you do government you a dupe promise God no more are you an internet froster you do them through the internet repent and promise God no more now is the acceptable time tomorrow may be too late such your life I don't know the if we are into if you are among those that are stealing and frost us, please, we don't need their money in our ministry. Don't give us offering or tithe or whatever. We don't need it. Amen your ways. Now is the acceptable time. Tomorrow may be too late. Are you involved in masturbation, fornication, or adultery? Confess them and say no more. Are you into prostitution? You say your body for money. Whether private or public prostitution, confess them and say, Lord, I am sorry. And if you are among those that commit abortion and prostitution, we don't need your money in the Lord chosen. I mean, you are ways. Are you into homosexual, lesbianism? Confess them and promise God no more. Are you a hired killer, a ritualist? Are you among those that are into terrorism? You must repent to that and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I don't know the wickedness I'm into. I mean your ways. No more kidnapping. No more robbery. No more ritual killing. Confess them and promise God no more. Those that are into fighting and quarreling. All those people that are disobedient and stubborn, disobey their husband, disobey the word of God or their parents, that is sin. And those people that beat their wife, that is wickedness in the sight of God. Amen the you are ways. Those that steal from the people that employ them, or those that don't pay those that they employ, that is sin. Or those that cheat in the exam, or cheat the person that employ them. Amen the you are ways. Those that give bribe and take bribe, and stop money because of their uniform, because of their position, because they are carrying God, because of the office where they are. You will never go there without them forcing money out from you. Are you like that? That is sin. I mean, you are ways. Or it could be you are into, you know, smuggling, you are a smuggler. And that is your specialist, please, we don't need your money. I mean, you are ways. Or you are involved into smoking cigarettes, taking snuff. And taking in their hand cocaine, heroin, you are selling it, you are buying it for people. You must repent today and say, Lord, no more. I don't know the wickedness I'm into. Maybe you're among those people that are involved in taking alcoholic drinks, or you are selling it or buying it for people by working in brewery or your distributor. Repent and say, Lord, no more. Show me mercy. As you repent today, the Lord will show you mercy. And if you are into these things because you want to help church, we don't need such money. I mean, you are ways. Those that marry and divorce. And all those people that are into polygamous marriage. Your second wife, your third wife. Or your man that married three wives. Remember today, marriage is between a man and a woman. And until they do your part. And if you are sent away a first wife, you must bring her back. And if you are the one that sent away and run away from your husband, you must return back the husband and be the first wife. And if you are going to marry another man, you must leave that man I mean the you are ways. Marriage is for better, for worse, until they do your part. Marriage between a man and a woman. In Matthew chapter 19 verse 4. Matthew chapter 19, verse 4. And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother 
and shall cleave to his wife, and the twin shall be one flesh. Wherefore there are no more twin, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. You can see that marriage is between a man and a woman, and until they do your part. Don't make mistake. Others have met. Make sure you stick to your wife, you stick to your husband. One man, one wife. And if you are sending away your wife, please bring her back before it is too late. And so, all the people involved into painting their hands and painting their leg and painting their mouth and painting their eyes, you must stop it today. That is sin. And those that put extra finger, extra eye, extra teeth, extra nose, attachment and weave on. I want to let you know, you don't need those things at all, at all. I mean, you are ways. Maybe earrings or bangle or jewelry. You don't need them. Attachment or weapon or payment. You sure don't need them. Confess them, renounce them, promise God no more. And the Lord will show your mercy. There is no more time. Tomorrow may be too late. Those that bleach their body and become yellow overnight. And all those young men that usually coil, rough hair, scattered hair, and they play their hair like women, that's an abomination. You must repent to them and say, Lord, I will do it no more. And so, if you look at Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 30, let's read. Jeremiah chapter 4, those doing these things, you should understand, is a mark of those who are spoiled. And that's what I want to read now. Chapter 4, verse 30. And when thou art spoiled, what will it thou do? Though thou clothest thyself with crimson, though thou deckest thee with ornament of gold, though thou rentest thy face with painting, in vain shall thou, thou make thyself fair, thy lovers will despise thee. They will seek thy life, praise the Lord. I want to let you know, if you are joining them to paint your face and paint your mouth, paint your eyes, I want to leave that same mark of those who are spoiled. You shouldn't do them anymore. It does not make you to be beautiful. Rather, it makes people to hunt for your life to destroy you. I mean, you are ways. And the Lord will show you mercy. I don't know the evil you are into. Repent. Now is the acceptable time. Tomorrow may be too late. I want you to understand, if you are among those women wearing trousers, that is abomination. If you are among the men wearing skirt and blouse, that is evil. For the Bible said, in Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5, look at your Bible, Deuteronomy 22 reading verse 5, he said, the woman shall not wear the which pertaining to a man, now let a man put on woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Those that do such things are what? Abomination before God. And abominable people can never enter the kingdom of God. So search your life. Amend your ways. And burn those things. And promise God no more. And the Lord will show you mercy. Abominable can never enter the kingdom of God. And that's the Bible said in Revelation chapter 21 verse 8. Let's read. Revelation 21 verse 8. It says, But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and homongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars that have their part in the lake which burn with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. People like that, he said, they shall be cast into hell fire. So, amen, you are ways. Remember, God loves you. What you just need to do is to repent and amen, you are ways. For God Almighty loves you in the book of Proverbs 28, verse 13. He said, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But whoso that confess them and forsake them shall have mercy. God is ready to show mercy. Because he has made provision for the cleansing of the sins that are past. In the book of Exodus chapter 12 verse 13, he said, When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And in the book of John chapter 1 verse 29, 
here we want to see the blood that was demonstrated in Exodus was the blood of animal. But it was done in a symbolic figure of the blood of Jesus which is to come. And so God is actually talking about the blood of Jesus Christ in a symbolic figure. In John chapter 1 verse 29 he said, The next day, John said Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Talking about the real Lamb. The Lamb of God is Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible said in John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world and he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him he should not perish but have everlasting life and in John chapter 19 verse 30 stands up when Jesus shed the blood he said it is finished the end of all sacrifice for sin he said is all over and no wonder in John chapter 14 verse he said I am the way the truth and the life no man cometh to the father but by me in John chapter 10 verse 10b he said I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And in John chapter 8, verse 36, he said, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. No wonder Jesus said, Come unto me. In Matthew 11, 28, Come unto me, O ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you your rest. I want to assure you, as you give your life to Jesus and make you a Lord, their best not Savior, total freedom shall be yours salvation shall be yours the peace of god shall be yours in fact joy shall be yours i'm assuring you jubilation shall be your portion in jesus name don't forget my brothers and sisters the bible made us understand in matthew chapter 6 verse 30 it says seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you i don't know what i'm looking for as a surrender to jesus today upon whom all these blessings are hinged upon honestly god will bless you and if you look at your bible in john chapter 1 verse 12 let's read john's gospel chapter 1 verse 12 he said but as many as receive him to then give him power to become the sons of god even to them that believe on his name as to receive jesus today into your heart the power of sonship the power of transformation shall be your portion in second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 therefore if any man be in christ is a new creation all things that passed away and behold all, the, behold all things that become new as a surrender to jesus today so that there shall be total transformation there shall be newness of life there shall be grace for righteousness it shall be a portion in jesus name in the book of romans chapter 10 and verse 13 the Bible said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. As you rise up and call upon the Lord now, salvation shall follow you home. Rise up on your feet. Everybody rise up and pray. Call upon him with all your heart, with all your soul. Call upon him and say, Lord, show me mercy. I'm sorry for my past life forgive me of every known and unknown sin forgive me O lord save me and sanctify me touch my life and renew it to god give me life from death by the power of the holy ghost i am sorry for the past life no more evil no more unrighteousness no more wickedness no more hatred no more envy no more stealing no more lying no more fighting no more quarreling no more wickedness i'm sorry for my past life everybody pray lord i ask for mercy on behalf of each and everyone that is here forgive your people save your people deliver your people change your people lord give them the grace to live the life that pleases you walk on them rakatelu vicarus ingenia reskinde lima rusi ingenia can pray skovana roko chandeli maru kiteni can pray oh lord let there be divine touch 
le kara zindini kapre rabaka sando robo kuchururo le zindelia kata ya mazuvi katelia le zijeria kapre le zindini kapre everybody pray everybody everybody I am sorry, love. I am sorry, love, Father. I am sorry, love. Oh, love. I am sorry, love. I am sorry, love. Sorry, love. Jehovah. Oh, love. I want more time. Sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Jehovah. I am sorry, Lord. Oh, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Eyes closed and head bowed. I want to pray for that person that's having unforgiving heart. Tell the Lord, I forgive from today. Forgive me. And raise your hand up. I'll pray for you. The person also involved in Thomas masturbation, keep your hands up. Promise God no more. I want to pray for your man that have terrible unbelief in your life. To so raise your hand up today, the Lord will heal you and give you salvation. That one smoking and drinking, keep your hands up. The Lord will deliver you and set you free. I want to pray for you that over the years you have been into stealing. Keep your hands up. I'm breaking the yoke for you. That person also committing masturbation. Keep your hands up. Eyes closed and head bow. The individual involved in lesbianism. Keep your hands up. Eyes closed and head bow. Promise God you will do it no more. The Lord will show you mercy. Eyes closed. The person that is into dupe, you do people. Keep your hands up and say, I will never try it again. And the Lord will change your life.